But if you're not going to replace two chillers, there are other things you can do. You can reduce the amount they run. And in fact, the, my view on this sort of stuff is the first thing to do with a lot of air conditioning equipment is ask yourself, does it actually need to run? If your chiller is running in the middle of winter, it's because your building's either got a serious design problem or you've got a serious operational problem. Most of the time, chillers don't need to run when it's cold outside. So you can put an outdoor air temperature lockout so that if your building can use outside air for cooling, then on a day like today, why are you running your chiller? And the answer is you're probably running your chiller to make your chiller feel happy and you know, to, to keep, keep carrier and their maintenance tech, technicians in a job. No, it's not a good move, okay? Really, your chiller should be running for about three or four months a year maximum in Melbourne, and for most of the rest of the year, it should be doing nothing. So consider that in, when you think about how your chiller is operating in your building currently. Well, operating at higher chilled water temperatures. The higher you run the chilled water temperature within limits, the more efficient your chiller becomes. And similarly, the lower your condenser water temperature uh, is. Now, um, so if we look at our chiller, here is our chiller. Uh, we have the chilled water that runs out to the building. So this is typically 6 degrees C. And we have um, condenser water, which goes out to a cooling tower, which might be you know, 29.5 degrees C, which is the standard design temperature. So people, people set these up like this. And you say, well, okay, what is magic about 6 and 29.5? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Okay, if you don't need 6 degrees, this could be uh, increased up to, up to probably 10 degrees C. And if you can do better than 29.5, this can be brought down into the low 20s and sometimes lower. For every one degree C, you reduce this temperature, you get about a 2% improvement in chiller efficiency. For every one degree C, you increase this temperature, you get anywhere between two and five, and some chillers, more than 5% improvement in efficiency. So just by varying those numbers, you can get a significant improvement in chiller efficiency without any hardware at all. Um, so the economics of that are fantastic. Um, the other thing which is worthwhile looking at is, is your staging. Okay? Chillers have uh, optimum efficiency points. For a lot of chillers, it's at 100%. Not all. Some chillers are up to actually the optimum at less than that. So staging up and down at the right time is really important. You don't want to have three chillers running at really pathetic load when one chiller could do the same job more efficiently. And bear in mind that every time you turn on a chiller, You've got pumps here and pumps here and all sorts of other things running at the same time. Okay, so they make the um, uh, they increase the amount of energy that's being consumed. And with these really efficient chillers, more and more what we're finding is that the energy consumed by the chiller is the least of our worries. Okay, and it's all the ancillary energy which actually starts really causing you pain. So the economics of better chiller operation are really good.